Hello, I'm Odin, and this time I'm not going to make a prop. I'm going to make something that I use to help make my Captain Marvel helmet. I wanted something smaller than my own head cast, but bigger than these styrofoam heads. What I decided to do was cover a styrofoam head with some 5mm craft foam. I started in a familiar way, making a pattern by covering the head with aluminum foil and then a layer of duct tape. With both steps, I tried to minimize the wrinkles and the excessive material because I wanted a smooth single layer of each in order to get the best fit that I could get. I only cover half of the head because I can copy the right side onto the left side and keep all the pieces symmetrical. Now this styrofoam head does have a slight tilt to one side, but I'm not worried about that. I made my center line based off the head itself and not how it looked sitting on the table. When drawing my pattern, I tried to look at how I thought a flat piece of craft foam would wrap and how to get the best fit that I could. I ended up making 10 pattern pieces per side, not counting the ears. My helmets could have fewer parts, but what I wanted was a pattern that wrapped around completely because it's going to live right here. I don't plan on taking it back off later. I cut up the foil master into the individual parts and flatten them all out. I trace each flat piece onto some poster board and make sure to copy all of the seam numbers and registration marks from each one. I will have 20 pieces of foam to work with at the end and it'll be easy to confuse the left side from the right side and which seam connects to which. I use a pattern notcher to clip out all the registration marks and this tool is great. You could just cut these by hand, but with this, it is so much faster and uniform. I'll put a link in the description. When I copy the patterns to some craft foam, I trace one side of the pattern for the right half and then flip it over and trace out the left. The notches are simple to mark, and I note what seam numbers are which, and I make sure to mark it left or right. I cut everything out, holding the blade at a 90 degree angle as best I could. This will make the flattest seams. If I cut the foam on an acute angle, the seam will rise up into a peak. I keep all the matching pieces together, less hunting later when I'm gluing. But they are all still flat. I want to add a curve to each of them. I use my heat gun and warm up both sides of a piece and then form it over a planishing stake that I made from a punch ladle. The exact curve is not as important as having any curve. This reduces the stress when gluing and it helps to make a smoother rounded shape. I still keep the sets of pieces together, and I decide not to use the ear parts that I originally drew because they're going to be too bulky in the end. Something new that I tried, I kept all the sharpie marks on the inside of each piece. They'll glue together the same, but the finished head will have a cleaner look without the sharpie written all over it. I fill a squeeze bottle with some contact cement, and then add a little to a seam and spread it out with some scrap foam. Evil Ted will do two coats of glue on a seam, which is a lot stronger. Sometimes I do that, sometimes I don't. I start at the top of the head, keeping an eye on the registration marks so the pieces will fit correctly and add the sides. While each piece sets up, you need to let contact cement nearly dry before it will actually stick together, I also start working on the face. Now, I never expected the face to be perfect. I just wanted a good approximation for where the nose and the eyes are, not a perfect replica of that styrofoam face and I decided to invert the eyepiece curves for a better fit. I glue the top of the head together, but I leave the back part of the seam open, and I carefully add the face and start working on the chin and neck pieces. All right, together a little faster than I thought I would. And then slip the whole thing over the head like a rubber mask. Now, it's a really tight fit, which is good because it's supposed to be. Even after gluing the back back together, the eyes just don't sit right. They need to kind of go in more. So I heated the foam again, hoping the head inside wouldn't just melt, and then press the eyes in for a better shape. To cover the ears, I used some thinner two millimeter craft foam. I heated it up and pressed it against the open ear. When the foam cooled, I could see the shape that I needed. So I could cut them out and then carefully glue them on, finishing the head. I increased the size for the head from just over 21 inches to almost 22 and 3 quarter inches. In hat sizes, that's the smallest small to nearly an extra large. I suppose you could print the pattern out and print it a little bigger and use an even thicker foam for an even larger head. I haven't tried it because this got me the head shape that I wanted in order to make the Captain Marvel helmet, which is all I really put it together for. But I did put a link for the pattern in the description so you can download it, print it out for yourself if you want to give it a try. 
My next video will be another prop with more PVC pipe and EVA foam because this is how Odin makes. It looks like a mashup between Blue Man Group and The Gimp from Pulp Fiction. I want to thank Darren Sanga, Carl Tennant, and all of my Patreon supporters. You guys really do help keep this show running. If you like the video, please leave a comment below. And if you like what I'm doing, don't forget to subscribe. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture.